So today this arrived, it's my Star Adventure mount by Skywatcher and this is going to enable me to um, take some longer exposures of the, the sky and keep up with the rotation of the Earth. So let's see what's inside the box. Feels very surgical using this knife, but without the skill. So this is the this is the equatorial wedge, and um, I need to set this to 52 degrees in England. So you undo it with the clutch on the side, and then you can adjust it with this screw on the front. So let me adjust that now. It's got a bubble level there, and then I can adjust azimuth with these two screws there, like on any equatorial mount. It's all well made, it's a lot of metal, it feels a lot more substantial than the pictures imply. And there's a little fixing dovetail on the top. It's a periscope illuminator there, it's plastically plasticky feeling thing. Um, it's kind of an optional extra really. You can uh, just maximum, minimum on and off so you can vary the brightness. This is a 3 apes ball head adapter to mount a camera to the Star Adventurer. Fixing, fixing dovetail there. So this is the, the main item itself. What have we got here? So it's got a battery cover. That feels quite flimsy. Looks to take for double A batteries. I think that's going to fall off. There's a little chart on the front and it just tells you what the mode dial does. On This is the mode dial on that side. So this is just a little chart that tells you what this dial does. And it does celestial tracking, solar tracking, lunar tracking. And then it's got different rates of speed from 0.5 to 12 times. So it will either do a, a full day's rotation in 48 hours or it will it can do it as quick as two hours. Um, <clears throat> on this side we've got some arrow buttons. There's a time-lapse mode in the middle of that switch there. And it's got south and north, I guess for selecting whether you're in the northern or southern hemispheres. Must be for that. Yeah, that's falling off already, that is. That's, I think the battery cover seems to be already the weak point of the, the mount. It's got a auto guider port there and a USB, 5 volt USB, not quite sure what that's for. So the Poloscope illuminator, the Poloscope cover there, that looks like you just click it in at the sides and pull off and that's quite a nice looking Poloscope, it's got the setting circle, it's got all the adjustments around it, it's got some screws that you can adjust to align it, but I'll check the alignment of that at some point. So that looks a lot better than the that looks a lot better than the battery cover. That's staying on quite nicely. Let's try and put this together now. That's a free apes nut on there, a little fixing dovetail. So we'll screw that on, and then this will allow us to attach it to the the wedge, which sits on top of the tripod. So that, I won't do it really tight for now, I'll just do it hand tight. Actually I might just give it a little tweak. I've got something I can pop in there just to tweak it round. I do. And that will slot onto there by the looks of it. So vixen dovetail fitting. Just undo the bolt for it. And as I said a moment ago, it's got this nice little bolt there to stop it from sliding all the way through so I can just tighten that up now and it'll be nice and safe so that's what that looks like there's a little bubble level there for setting up your tripod that's looking nice look at that it feels more substantial than I thought it was going to 
after that, that battery cover is just waiting to come off. I might have to sort of fiddle with that and try and improve it. So this, I've got, I've already got a tripod for this. This is a pre-existing tripod that they sell actually for the Star Adventure, but I've just got it for other reasons. I've had like a little mini gyro mount on here for my little Takahashi FS60, but I've just uh, pinched it to try this mount out. So let's uh, set that up. We can probably adjust the camera a little bit now, I think. Put this down. Let's move this up, there we go. Right. So, three eighths thread on the bottom there. We'll pop that on. Before you put anything on this clamp, the Vixen clamp, you need to take this little plug out for the polar scope by the looks of it. So you can look, look through there and line up Polaris, and then attach. Actually, it's got this hole in the center of the dovetail plate, so you should be able to have the camera board or whatever small telescope aboard and still, yeah, I'll see if I can show you that. See, so you can still use the, the polar scope with this on board by the looks of it. It's a nice little feature. I thought about that clearly. So this here looks like where we attach the cat weight bar at the bottom of the dovetail plate. So let's screw that on. Ah, I've got to put the counterweight on first by the looks of it. So I'll demonstrate. And then we'll screw that on there. I'll feed it all the way to the top while I've not got anything on board. I think this might actually take the weight of my tak little Takahashi. It does feel more sturdy than I thought it was going to. If I just thread that up there for now, just so it's not hanging too much weight off it. Starting to look good. Starting to look like a mount now. Where's that go? I don't know, who knows. So next step is to grab some batteries. And it's on, I can hear, I can hear it going now. I'll just hold the microphone close to it to see if you can hear it. So it is quiet. There's some. Um, I immediately see. I can immediately see some red illumination behind the buttons there, which will allow you to see the buttons in the dark. That's really good. I can see a little red LED behind behind each button. So that's a really nice touch. So it saves you having to get your torch out and to see where the buttons are. That's really well thought out. I like that. So I'm going to set that to Northern Hemisphere. And I want to set it to Celestial just in case. Uh... Oh yeah, so this is illuminated as well. So, so the, um, the mode dial's illuminated. So it's illuminated on the, the thing you want to select. So Let's get this a bit closer so you can see. So that one's 12 times, 6 times, 2 times, 0.5 times. Lunar, solar and celestial. The next one is off. So we'll put that on celestial. Celestial even. And you can just hear it sort of clicking it just sort of like ticks over. One thing I did think the package included was a, a ball head for 
attach into here so you can adjust your camera to any angle you want. So I can't see any mention of that in the instructions, so I'll, uh, I'll, have, to I'll have to order one of those separately, I think. I couldn't resist. I had to put the Takashi FS60 on and just see how it does on the Star Adventure mount. Still horrible day outside today, so I can't go out and try it with, for a bit of solar with my, with my Lunt 50. So this, this is probably going to be the heaviest thing you'd want to put put on this mount. I've weighed the Takashi and it's uh, just shy of two kilograms. So by the time you've had added a eyepiece or a camera, you're probably looking at, you know, closer to two and a half, three kilograms. And the, the weight limit for the mount is five kilograms and they always overestimate. So I'd say probably three kilograms is probably more realistic. So this is going to represent kind of the, the largest weight you'd want to probably hang off this theoretically i mean i will try this physically and see how it does but theoretically this is probably going to be roughly what this mount can take so if i undo the clutch and to see how it balances so this is the right ascension clutch you always want it a tiny bit counterweight heavy so there's a bit of tension on the gearing so there's no slack and it, you don't get any backlash when it's tracking. Backlash equals trailed stars, so you definitely want to eliminate as much as that as possible. That that kind of leaves quite a bit of distance, leaves quite a bit of distance on the counterweight bar to allow an eyepiece to be attached to a, a small camera. So I'm I'm feeling quite optimistic about trying this. I think it it should work quite nicely. It certainly feels quite smooth. It feels smooth all the way round, which is a good sign. There's no, there's no binding on right ascension or anything. So just for fun, I might just stick my uh, Heritage 100P uh, F4 reflector on, which is going to be probably about half the weight of this. But I just want to see how it how it's going to look. So we'll we'll switch now. I've switched over to the Heritage 100P before placing it on the. Star Adventure, I weighed it and it comes in at 1.3 kilograms, so it's about 700 grams lighter than the Takashi FS60, so no problem for this mount at all. And I think it actually looks really good on the mount. I did think it might, visually, I did think it would clash quite a lot with the green and white livery, but it looks pretty cool. And the, the, visually, the size of it looks quite nice for the size of the mount itself. Um, I think that's probably going to be quite a nice little telescope to use on this mount and because it's f4 I'm looking forward to trying a bit of webcam imaging of some deep sky objects with this. Um, I can't attach a bigger camera like my Panasonic G80 or my, my, Can my Canon M3 because it's a, it's a 1.3 inch focus so you're going to get a lot of vignetting and it's just going to be too much for such a little plastic focus. Uh, but I'm looking forward to giving this a go. Can be no problem sort of if I place the cat weight to the top that's going to be pretty nicely balanced I think so I'll report back this is all just sort of theoretical at the moment because I've not had it out and actually used it but it's first impressions and we'll, we'll see how it performs and I'll uh, I'll report back thank you very much for watching if any suggestions or videos you'd like me to do please leave comments below um, and I'll do my best. Thanks very much and see you later. Bye.